Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. Our prior video explained how the sun produces the solar spectrum through liquid metallic hydrogen, a structure similar to graphite. This flexible structure easily explains other aspects of solar emission, including limb darkening, sunspots, faculi, and granules. Theoretical studies on dense atomic hydrogen suggest that its metallic character is dependent on internuclear distance. The shorter the distance, the greater the metallic character. At longer distance, the material becomes a semi-metal like graphite. In my papers linked below, I refer to the less metallic hydrogen as type 1 and the more metallic form as type 2. It is believed that metallic hydrogen is made by high temperatures and pressures in the solar interior and remains stable once formed. This is the same situation in diamonds, which are formed at high pressures, but remain stable at atmospheric pressures. To understand the emissive behavior of the sun, we should learn a little about directional light emission in real materials. When a nonmetal emits photons, it typically has maximal emission at the normal. This means that maximal emission is seen by looking straight down at the surface. As we observe from angles farther away from the normal, less photons would reach our detector. When plotted, you can see that the emissivity is optimal at 0 degrees and decreases gradually towards 90 degrees or tangential to the emitting surface. Interestingly, metals are very different. Metals typically have a lower emissivity at the normal than a nonmetal. However, as we move away from the normal, the emissivity rises to a certain maximum before falling rapidly. This difference between metals and nonmetals is important to understand the emissive properties of the photosphere and its structures. The photosphere does not have a highly metallic character. The majority of the magnetic activity on the sun occurs in sunspots and faculi. Therefore, the photosphere is type 1 atomic hydrogen, with the semi-metallic characteristic of graphite. Because of this, we could expect that the emissivity of the photosphere would be highest when we observe the center of the solar disk, and would decrease as our sampling moves towards the limb, as expected in a weak semi-metal or non-metal. This is precisely what we observe on the Sun. The solar disk is brightest at the center, then becomes darker towards the limb, and does so in a frequency-dependent manner. This is strong evidence for a semi-metallic photosphere. The standard model accounts for this behavior by claiming that when we are viewing the center of the solar disk, we are peering deeper into the sun, where it is hotter and therefore where the light is brighter. Astronomers argue that the limb appears darker because those photons arise from higher up in the photosphere, where it is cooler. Therefore, to account for the solar spectrum and limb darkening, not only are solar physicists invoking the sum of unrelated opacity mechanisms as seen in this video, but now they are insisting that at times we are seeing deeper into the sun. Instead of such poorly formulated arguments, metallic hydrogen explains limb darkening via the known emissive properties of materials in the laboratory. In addition, limb darkening shows that condensed matter which makes up the bulk of the photosphere is not highly metallic. Next, let's discuss granules which make up most of the photosphere. Granules are thought to be convective cells on the sun. Material rises from the convection zone into the solar surface, then travels across it before entering dark intergranular lanes and returning into the solar interior. In the standard solar model, the brightness of the granules and the intergranular lanes is accounted for with temperature. The granules are hot, and therefore bright, with cooler, darker intergranular lanes. I disagree with such a wide temperature difference between granules and lanes, which constitute one external surface on the Sun. Moreover, the intergranular lanes should be lower than the center of the granules, and therefore brighter in this model, not darker. Conversely, the metallic hydrogen model explains this phenomenon easily. The center of the granules is viewed at the normal to the surface, while the intergranular lanes are viewed at an angle away from the normal. Both surfaces are at the same temperature, but the directional spectral emissivities are vastly different. This is why the granular center appears bright while the intergranular lanes appear dark. Next up are facula. 
Facula represent materials that have been propelled from the interior of the sun, often associated with sunspots, onto the photospheric surface. They are known to be highly magnetic. Furthermore, facula have the interesting property of being brighter at the limb of the sun and then fading to match the photosphere at the center of the disk. So why are facula brighter at the limb? The standard model of the sun argues that when we view facula at the limb, we are actually sampling hot walls of material as seen in these papers. Since the wall is hot, it is bright. As faculae approach the center of the sun, we are now sampling a cooler floor. The faculae become darker and adopt the emissivity of the photosphere. This is clearly unreasonable. How can a gaseous sun form stable hot walls? In addition, why would the floor of faculae be cooler than the walls? The limb darkening argument in the standard solar model had maintained that materials located deeper in the sun are hotter and brighter. It is clear that the standard model cannot explain the emissive behavior of faculae. Fortunately, this is not the case in the liquid metallic hydrogen solar model. If faculae are viewed as type 2 metallic hydrogen, which is formed at higher pressures and is more metallic than the semi-metal version of the photosphere, we would expect them to be brighter at the limb than at the center of the sun, because in metals directional spectral emissivity can be greater when viewed at an angle other than at the normal. In addition, it makes perfect sense that the magnetic behavior of faculae would occur in more metallic versions of atomic hydrogen. Lastly, sunspots. Sunspots appear darker than the photosphere. The standard model claims that sunspots are cooler than the photosphere and that is why they are darker. The problem with this argument is that we have known since the days of Wilson in the late 1700s that sunspots appear to lie below the level of the photosphere. Wilson came to that conclusion by geometrical arguments. But if sunspots are deeper than the photosphere, the standard model will predict that they should appear warmer, not cooler. How do we explain this in the liquid metallic hydrogen solar model? We know that sunspots are the site of powerful magnetic fields bursting out of the solar surface. Strong magnetic fields on Earth typically indicate the presence of metals. If sunspots are at a lower layer in the sun, then metallic hydrogen would be more compressed and more metallic than at the surface. In that case, we could expect a lower normal emissivity. The sunspot appears dark because it is more metallic, not because it is cool. What about the emissivity of sunspots at the limb? It has been reported many times at the beginning of the 20th century that the emissivity of sunspots increases at the limb exactly as our model would have predicted. However, because the standard solar model cannot account for this, solar astronomers have avoided this problem, claiming contamination from the photosphere. Note also that the layered planes and sunspots are likely to be orthogonal to the solar surface as suggested both by the presence of powerful solar winds above sunspots and by their means of formation, as discussed in this paper. Conversely, the layered hexagonal planes and facula should be parallel to the solar surface. This could help account for differences in emissivities observed between sunspots and facula, even though they are both type 2 materials. I would like to finish this video with Occam's razor. The standard solar model explains these phenomena by claiming that we could look deeper in the sun at different angles using temperature differences, fictional walls and floors in a gaseous object, and mysteriously dark yet deep sunspots. The metallic hydrogen model explains all of these things with one mechanism, semi-metals and metals changing emissivity with viewing angle. In addition, the magnetic activity of the sun verifies the magnetic behavior of type 2 hydrogen in faculae and sunspots. Which of these two models is more reasonable? I hope you enjoyed this video on limb darkening, granules, faculae and sunspots. If you did, hit that like button. If you'd like to see more, subscribe and join me as we look more closely at the sun, the stars and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below. And I'll see you soon on our next video.